Hi, I'm Michael Bean, and welcome to the Confidence, oh no, this is a MyFreeActingClass.com uh, lesson for Tuesday, July the 14th. Uh, you can find the link to these classes at MyFreeActingClass.com, and if you want to see the taped lessons, you can find them at uh, ConfidenceOnCamera.com, or you can just follow the links you know, from the My Free Acting Class page. All right, uh, today I want to talk about industry and story because that's you know, what I try and cover on Tuesdays. Uh, and for the folks who are here nice and early, uh, just a reminder that if you have your video on, you know, then I'm assuming this means that I can call on you and, the, and be like, hey, here, uh, you know, can you help me with this thing? Why don't you try and say this line, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we're not going to do uh, as much of the physicality as we do on Mondays. Uh, Monday, I like finding scripts that involve physicality. Oh, I found some great scripts for next Monday. One where you get to be strangled to death by the mummy. You know, for this, this is like an adult one from Supernatural. Uh, and, oh uh, gosh, you know, what was the other one? I, like, I picked two short ones where I'm like, oh my God, those are going to be so much fun to work on. So just to get you pumped about uh, next Monday. Uh, today, uh, why don't we start with... Uh, a very short one from Smallville, uh, just so we can uh, talk subtext, uh, and you can see the kind of things. There's a lot of the stuff that actually auditions. Uh, an actor role, you know, uh, this is the you'll see it listed. You know, actor or principal. Um, actor means six lines or less. Uh, and and so uh, here we go. Uh, this so this is a, a short audition from a number of years ago. Uh, we've got, oh, here, let me call on some folks, you know, to help me out before. Uh, so I'm going to need a uh, tech uh, and a supervisor. Uh, Artie, do you want to be my supervisor? You want to be the boss? Okay, great. You're the boss. You're, you're the supervisor. You know, and Caden, I know you're always really keen, but it's very hard to imagine you playing a technician in a science lab. You're just a little too young for that one. You know, the, uh, but thank you for your, like, pure enthusiasm. Uh, the... Uh, Let's see. Um, Sara, do you want to be my tech? Or Eve, you know, like, I, I get to work with Sara on Sundays. Do you want to be my tech here? Sure. Okay, great. Uh, right, so you're still too young for it, but, like, you know, the, uh, most of the adults have turned their videos off. Okay. And, and Deborah's, I've called on her a couple of times lately, so I don't want to make her do the work always. Uh, here we go. Smallville. Interior observation room, NASA observatory base night. Close on a smattering of specks blipping on a radar screen reveal a stunned tech sitting at the console in a darkened room, staring at the screen in horror. Sir, you better take a look at this. A supervisor hurries over, peers over his shoulder. What do you got? I've never seen anything like it. There was no activity whatsoever 10 seconds ago. My God, it's headed straight for Earth. Off the impending doom! End of teaser. Impending doom! Uh, right, so very science fiction, isn't it? Uh, and so if, uh, Artie, uh, is it okay if I, I workshop with you for a minute? Sure. Right, so the, this idea of like, what do you put under that line? You know, uh, what I usually get people to do when we're rehearsing is I say, okay, start with the just facts version. You know, so I know it feels, it's gonna feel a little weird, but look at me and just say the words, just facts. Just facts? Yeah, just say just facts. As simply- Just as facts. Just facts, exactly. Now say the line like you said that. Say, my God, it's headed straight for Earth. But say it like just facts. My God, it's, my God, it's headed for Earth. Yeah, good, it's headed straight for Earth. My God, it's straighted, it's, it's headed straight for Earth. Exactly, good, so that's where I would recommend you rehearse. You rehearse with just facts. You're not neutral, so not like, my God, it's headed straight for Earth. But the whole goal in rehearsing is to rehearse in a way uh, that will give you a foundation and then you can play in whatever way from that foundation. Does that make sense? Yep. You know, and so uh, one more time, give me the just facts version of the line. Just say, uh, just say, say just facts. If you're confused, say just facts. Just facts. And say, my God, it's headed straight for earth. My God, it's headed straight for earth. Okay, good. You know, uh, now uh, uh, look at me and say, we're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. Good, but, uh, but you have to actually commit to it. Like, you know, uh, so now we're sort of imagining it's real. Say, we're all gonna die. Like with um, emotion. Just say, just say, we're all gonna die, exactly. We're, we're not all gonna, gonna die. die. But now say it like it's real, right? So now, now you are committing to it, you're imagining it. Just say, 
like, oh my God, we're all going to die. Okay. We're all going to die. Good. Now, just like you said that, no more than that, say the line, which is, my God, it's headed straight for Earth. But now say it like you just said, uh, we're all going to die. Go for it. Go. Action. My God, we're, it's headed straight for Earth. Good. And see, so you hear how the, it's carrying now some of what she means with it for everybody listening, you know, the, um, but she, we're not hearing her try to show you how serious it is, right? So this is where subtext is so useful, you know, and why like going, okay, well, what does this line mean to you? And why I like using this tool, but it starts from that foundation of just facts, because then we can take it in any direction we want, you know, um, now if we wanted to go totally different, uh, direction with it, you know, uh, look at me and say, this makes no sense at all. This makes no sense at all. Good, and go even further with it. Like, this makes no sense at all. Go all the way with it. This makes no sense at all. So now say the line like you said that. Action. This makes no, no sense No, no, the line is, my God, it's oh. headed straight for Earth. So say the line like you said that. Go. My God, this is headed straight for Earth. Right? Yeah, and so there's a different flavor of it. And you can see how we can just keep playing with that in different ways. Um, now, now let's look at the script for today, you know, so that we can go over the story questions you know, and we can sort of work our way down to that, like, what is the objective phrase and how do we fire it up? You know, but I wanted to give you a little actor challenge to start off with just for something fun because I haven't led the class with one of those for a while. Uh, and I've been doing that with the classes that I taught both on Sunday uh, and yesterday in my at Monday adult class. Throwing it out there that, you know, anybody who's looking for an, a weekly online you know, Zoom acting class, uh, you can find me at confidenceoncamera.com. Uh, I have space, definitely have one space in the, in the kids' class right now. There's one, maybe two spaces in the teens' class, uh, and I think I have one space in my adult class. So throwing it out there. You, can, you know where to find me. Uh, the, let me open up the second script. Uh, so this is from a project called Heaven. I think what we've got is two teen girls on this one, you know, and so who's teen girl-ish? Uh, the, <laughs> right, except that I like you already did a demo. You know, people are going to be like, why does Eve always get to play? We never get to play. Because apparently in my mind, everybody's still in like elementary school. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, Christina, do you want to do this one? Okay, great. Uh, and uh, Sara, do you want to read the other side of it? Sure. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, here we go. Uh, now let's do this. Uh, the Christina, you're going to read Heaven, and Sara, you're going to read Annie. Uh, don't put any pressure on yourself to cry, please. <laughs> In, interior, Annie's bedroom, Hasbrook House, day. Uh, Annie lies on her bed, face down, bawling into her pillow. Heaven sits on the bed next to her, hands her another tissue, rubs her back. You guys will see each other on vacations and holidays. Drake didn't disappear forever when he went off to a school. I know, it's just that... You grow up all this time with all the people you love, and then all of a sudden, work or school or something takes everyone away. Not everyone. Me and Dad are still here. I know, but Luke is, he's my best friend, you know. He's not just my brother. You, you didn't think you and Luke would, and Drake could be running around, wait, oh, sorry. You didn't think you and Luke and Drake could, would be running around, what is it? Just say it, just say it, just, just say it wrong, but just, just say it. That's what you've got to do when you're reading. You didn't think you and Luke and Drake could be running around literal like little kids for the rest of your lives. Well, no, but wouldn't that be so bad? Heaven chuckles, so does Annie. But then she breaks out into new tears. Heaven pulls her into a hug. Your dad and I have both left Wittero for a while, but we came back to stay and we're not going anywhere. We're always right here for you. And when you get married one day, we'll be right there with you and you, you go on your honeymoon, we'll Share a room. We'll share a room. Oh God! Any oh, last one? Right, exactly. Great. You know, okay. So, uh, so this is you know, uh, heaven's the adult. You know, uh, in this one, uh, Annie is the kid. Uh, the we look up the project, and this is where we get into a little bit of research. Uh, the story questions, uh, at least you know the way that I've been thinking about them lately, and I I think I said yesterday that I've. I've been thinking about the story questions a little bit differently lately, and I'm uh, or making trying to make it 
uh, simple and accessible, so we can use it for this lesson. Obviously, any details that you want to add, uh, you should, uh, yeah, but style, writer's story, my story, arc, which we're going to talk about today, has it changed from the beginning to the end, uh, descriptive words, da 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 da, da. So uh, let's start with the style, which I think we have to do a little bit of research. Now, if you got this audition, uh, the, then in the breakdown, you would find out that is from uh, the VC Andrews Heaven, oh, wrong page, uh, the, which we're going to find on IMDb. So uh, we look up Heaven, you know, uh, even if we only had the name, you know, then, well, it's probably not this 2002 one because it's all serious. VC Andrews Heaven, we'd look it up. Uh, we would see the plot summary. Uh, also, knowing uh, VC Andrews Heaven, we could go, huh, what is like VC Andrews Heaven? Heaven is the first book in the Castile series by author V.C. Andrews. Also the name of the main character, Heaven Castile, in the Castile series. Right, so okay, this is a, a whole set of books. And you could go and read a whole bunch of information about this. If you were preparing for the audition, you know, this might take you an extra, what? You know, like 10 minutes, 15, you know, but might be worth putting in that uh, extra level of research. For the moment, we're just gonna do the quick overview. Um, but knowing that it is a, a V.C. Andrews uh, novel uh, gives you extra opportunities. High school girl heaven is the eldest of da -da 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 details, details, details. Heaven said to live. Doesn't say anything about Annie in here, and so I'm assuming that uh, the, the Annie, uh, either the character was changed. You know, it's a flashback. It's a flash forward. You know, uh, I don't have details. It's also possible the script changed dramatically between when these audition sides came out. And when the movie was actually made, you know, we, um, if you were auditioning for this, right. So now we've got, you know, VC Andrews, we've got a, like a little bit of a sense of that. We can look up, uh, the, uh, let me go back to, or right, we can look up the director, Paul Shapiro and the writers, you know, Virginia C. Andrews, who's uh, based on the novel by, okay, that's VC Andrews says it right there. Um, and we would look these people up to get a sense of the style, particularly the director, uh, but of course the writers as well. If we looked up Paul Shapiro, uh, right here before V.C. Andrews Heaven, we've got Death of a Cheerleader, Tiny House of Terror, and A Heavenly Christmas. You know, now, given the uh, V.C. Andrews books, Death of a Cheerleader, maybe Tiny House of Terror, you know, it's the picture is like somebody being stabbed in the floor, like a, with a knife in her face, probably not the right one, you know, not based on the scene we just read, right? Death of a Cheerleader, maybe probably uh, we're looking at this one, A Heavenly Christmas, you know, for like a sense of the style. Right, so uh, Hallmark, uh, you know, uh, everything's kind and sweet and hopeful. You know, then we look at the two uh, authors, you know, here, now, and uh, it, I'm just going to jump right to, right, so uh, V.C. Andrews looks like she's adapted a bunch of her novels. Uh, they're coming up, you know, so especially if they're shooting those in Vancouver and auditioning in Vancouver, that's useful to know. Uh, interestingly, My Sweet Audrina, this TV movie, uh, is the last one that she co-wrote uh, with the other writer on this. Okay, so that's probably the one that is like the uh, going to be the best for us to look at is this movie here, My Sweet Audrina. Secluded Mansion, da, 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 we can look it up on YouTube and watch a little uh, clip of it. Right, ah, oh, there it is, My Sweet Audrina trailer. That's probably the one. My dead sister, Audrina. Every Sunday of my childhood, we had to visit her grave. My father and mother only hoped that I might one day be as lovely and special as she had been. My aunt Elspeth, my mother's older sister, always came with us to the cemetery. She and my cousin Vera. Okay, so we've got you know one that's like sweet and hallmarky, and you know one that's kind of spooky. Yeah, you know, the uh, but both of them uh, look like they have. Um, the, and, uh, and the one that the, these two writers last did together had a teen girl protagonist. You know, so my guess is that the scene we've just watched you know, is something towards the end of the movie you know, with the, like, the teen girl protagonist as an adult. I don't know that for a fact. I mean, we'd have to do a little bit more research. But this is just to give you a sense of the style. 
You know, so now if you're going to throw into, you're in a heavenly Christmas, hey, um, success for Glenn G. Uh, congratulations. You know, the, I don't know if we saw you in the trailer there, uh, but you know, uh, Glenn G just put in the chat window that he was in one of the movies that we just watched the trailer for. Right, they shoot a lot of these Hallmark movies in Vancouver, you know, uh, some 90, 100 a year sometimes. Uh, the, so if you had to put words to the style, you know, for this movie Heaven that we're doing, you know, uh, what would you say the style is? Right, so we're going to go back to these questions. Right, and it's, it's, always, uh, it's always guess. Right, it's our best guess. Right, there's no right or wrong, they're just more or less effective. You know, so the what would you say the style is? Is it is it uh, drama? Is it it's an emotional, okay, emotional drama. Okay, something like that. Some, you know, the um, one of the trailers that we just watched was spooky, uh, Olivia, but do you remember the scene? The scene is between like the crying girl and the girl who's like, it's not the end of the world. So there's nothing really um, uh, you know, and oh, and possibly like uh, Christian uh, period. You know, so uh, drama. Uh, so period drama, uh, I think, is what Christian means by classic, which is that like it's set in. It looks like this uh, story, uh, at least the VC Andrews book, was set in the '60s, which we found out uh, from Wikipedia. You know, so that that's useful to know if that's the case, you know, because it means that they're going to be less hip, right? The sad, uh, you know, sad, you know, emotional, sad drama. Great. Uh, the writer's story, you know, uh, you know, uh, girl, heaven from very complicated family, family trying to make a, build a life for herself or herself. Um, now my story, right? Like, so let's, uh, let's look at, uh, the, do we want to look at heaven, you know, the the adult, you know, in uh, the scene that we've just read, or do we want to look at Annie, the crying teenager? You know, which one's more interesting to us today? You know, like basically the the we'll take the first three people who uh, you know uh, type something in the chat window. You want to look at Annie? Annie. Okay, great. We want to look at the crying girl. Uh, the so if you're playing Annie, you know, your story is that your brother Luke you know, ha has just moved away. You know, so uh, the, right, uh, da, 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 her daughter Annie is upset because her brother has just moved away from their small town, right? And we would learn that the, the name of the small town that they mentioned in the script, the word that Christina really struggled with, uh, was mentioned in the Wikipedia entry, so that's, that's their small town. Uh, so if you're playing any, what's your story? You know, what's the piece of that story that's interesting to you? you know, so you're not just you're know, playing kind of a generic sad girl. You know, I'll pull up the script again because you know I showed you several things uh, since we looked at that. Right? Is this um, is this story about like how important your family is to you? You know, or uh, is this story about uh, the relationship between you and your mom? Oh, beautiful. Eve is, is not wanting to accept change and growing up, right? That that's, uh, that that's your story. Good. So let's just, let's play with that. All right. And so you have to make a choice about that. And I think that top level, you know, knowing which part of it is meaningful or speaks to you uh, shapes the rest of your choices. So not wanting to accept change and growing up. Now, arc I haven't talked about yet, but arc is the change change from beginning to end. You know, and so if you, uh, the, and so where does the scene start? The scene starts with her like sobbing violently. Very sad. And it goes to what? Right, it goes to her like having a little laugh, you know, and being comforted by her mom. By mom, right? So happy crying. Yeah, great. So descriptive words, you know, for if you're if you're playing Annie, uh, three words to describe you as a person, like the way that Annie would describe herself, not the way that we describe Annie from the outside. 
Right? From the outside, we might say, oh, Annie's like, you know, uh, hysterical, weepy, da 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 da. You know, what we want is the way Annie thinks of herself or describes herself. You know, so, what are the words that Annie would use to describe herself? Caring. Yeah, exactly. She's caring, you know, loving, sentimental, right? The anything else? Yeah. You know, so the to uh, and then maybe you would include uh, something from like let's say you've done this exercise with yourself and this is a great exercise to do with yourself where you're like okay what are you have know, three or four adjectives for the way that I am as a person especially the way that like most people see me not the closest people to me necessarily you know uh, because those people know all the different sides of me but in general people usually think I'm like this and like this and like this you know those are that's often the way that you'll get cast. And that has to do with like your personality and your face and what people assume about you. And so maybe if you're doing this for yourself, you put in, you're like, well, people usually think I'm nice. Actually, that's actually like, you know, uh, I don't use the word nice when I'm thinking about my characters, but like kind, you know, the, is one of mine. So people are like, oh yeah, the guy's kind. He's got, got kind eyes. Uh, and so I'm like, great. Well, I'm gonna make them nice because this character is now me. Descriptive words for the mom, which is heaven. You know, so what's heaven like? Kind, clearly, and you know, maybe she is straightforward, so supportive. Great. Uh, the script relationship, you know, is mother daughter. Uh, the emotional relationship, uh, and this is where it's like, okay. One of them, you know, if I'm really upset, who's comforting me? You know, and so this is a choice that you kind of have to make for yourself, right? So um, if I'm, if I was playing Annie, I might say the emotional relationship is my best friend. You know, I also, maybe I have that relationship with my mom and I'm like, uh, you know, my actual mom, right? So it's like, the, who's the person who I know I can just like be a mess and fall apart, you know, and like, really have like full little kid emotions with and they won't judge me and they're going to love me and they're going to reassure me, you know, the, who is that person? You know, and for you know, me, you know, Michael Bean, I would probably say my best friend, you know, uh, but, uh, but if that's your mom, you know, or if that's your, or if that's your dad, or if that's your grandpa, you know, or you're like, the idea is that the script relationship is mother daughter. The script will do that work for us. The emotional relationship can be anything that helps it make sense to you. And so I would say pick, this is a, a personal decision that helps it make sense to you. And again, there's no right and wrong, just more or less effective uh, for this one. You know, th that, uh, the, uh, that what anchors it is uh, if it helps bring you into that feeling. You know, so personal. Uh, and then your objective phrase, you know, what the, and this is like, what do you want you know, from the mom? You know, and uh, can we put that into simple words? What do you want from the mom? If you're Annie, you want her to make you feel better. Uh, you want her to explain it to you. Help me, help me, right? Tell me it'll be okay, right? Tell me it'll be okay. Or uh, tell me I'm not alone or, um, Right, you want mom to be happy, right? Because like I'm falling apart and I need to remember that like I want somebody else to not fall apart. That's an interesting and tricky one, Olivia. I'm not sure how we would put that into an objective phrase, but if I want mom to be happy, you know, the uh, maybe that's just a different version of tell me it's it'll be okay, right? It's, it's like show me it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Or the, uh, you know, and... And what if there's, uh, we want something different from the mom? You know, what if it's like, you know, uh, what if my objective, you know, is to uh, get her to feel bad with me? Or I'm like, no, like the, um, ah, ah, knock me out of this. Ooh, fun. Christian, that's a really interesting one. Out of, yes, right, that's exactly it. Uh, what I was thinking, Christian, is feel sorry for me. Sorry for me. You know, or ev everything is ruined, ruined forever. 
right? Because it's, it's very uh, young, right? Like the fact that she's sobbing in tears, emotionally very young. It happens in scenes. Please don't leave me, right? The, uh, interesting. You know, the right, it's the right idea, uh, Caden, but we want something that's directed at the mom and not at the, at the brother. Although I guess you could do like Luke's leaving, everybody's leaving. I'm scared that the mom's gonna leave. You know, and so you actually could play exactly what Caden said, which is, please don't leave me. Ooh, interesting, Christina. Like, if you imagine that the mom is, like, sort of much more strict, you know, it's like, don't be mean to me or don't, you know, uh, and so lots of different options here. So why don't I copy and paste this, you know, down here. And we'll stop the share and go back to the script. Yeah, and then I think I've left you all to uh, with the power to unmute yourselves today, and uh, I haven't gotten any like weird feedback or people unmuting themselves. You know, uh, so thank you for that. Uh, let's go to the script here. There, I can see a bunch of you. And so if we pick you know, one of these lines, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, would that be so bad? All right, so let's pick you know, one from the top you're here. So from especially you know, where it's sort of like most emotionally charged, right? So any uh, and so Olivia, you want to try this? I know you like you know doing the demos. It's a complicated line. Is it going to be too complicated for you? You know, so. Uh, Try, try reading this line, try reading just the just facts version. I know it's just you grew up all this time with all the people you love. We're only gonna take it that far, okay? I know it's just that you grow up all this time. With all the with people you love. With all the people you love. Good, you know, so, uh, so try that one more time, just that part with the, all the people you love. I, yeah, I know it's just that you grew up all this time with all the people you love, because I need you to be at the point where you're not trying to remember the lines so that we can really play with them. So just say it one more time. I know it's just you grew up all this time with all the people you love. I know. It's just that you grow up all this time with all the people you love. Good. You know, and then uh, pick one of these objective phrases. So... Uh, tell me I'm not alone, or tell me it'll be okay, or help me, or knock me out of this, or everything's ruined. Which one's interesting to you, Olivia? Uh, knock me out of this? Knock me out of this, right? So you're really upset, you know? And so just say, you know, um, and so we're just gonna imagine that like you're really upset and it's really freaking you out, you know, and you say, knock me out of this, say that. Knock me out of this. Good, and then say the line like you said that. I know it's just that. Go, go, go. Say the line no. like. Go, I go, know. go, go. It's just that you grow up all this time with all the people you love. Yeah, and so um, you can see that if she filled it up like that, and especially if we uh, did some work so that she didn't have to cry and, uh, and showed that physically at the beginning of the scene, right? You know, so uh, I talked about this in the Q&A after one of the lessons um, just like a day or two ago, or I guess, you know, maybe it was early last week. Uh, you, the, uh, Christian, uh, do you want to, uh, to do a demo for me? You've left your video on, so I'm assuming you want to play? Right, good, so lean in. Are they? Uh, just lean in, you know, and, uh, and start with, um, I know it's just, you grew up all this time with all the people you love and just say that. Okay. I know, it's just that you grew up all this time with all the people you love. Good, and is there a desk in front of you? Um, yes, actually. Great, so put your, put your elbows on it and get your face in your hands. Yeah, exactly, and so start there, you know, and, uh, and I just want you to breathe, and so start with like just a couple of seconds of like, right, so you're not trying to feel, you're not trying to cry, you're just using breath 
and the fact that you're kind of hiding from us and the audience is going to go, oh, it looks like he's really upset because he doesn't want to be looked at right now. And that's normal human behavior when somebody's crying or they're upset. Does that make sense? And then you take the, all the pressure off yourself to do that. So start like that. Start with your face in your hands and start with the breath. Let me hear the breath. Good. And then uh, pick one of these objective phrases. Tell me it'll be okay. Tell me I'm not alone. Um, feel sorry for me. Everything's ruined. Which one's interesting to you? Mm -hmm. I'll say, uh, tell me it'll be okay. Tell me it'll be okay. Good. So just really fully commit to it and look at me and say, tell me it'll be okay. okay. Just say that. Oh. Tell me it'll be okay. Good. Yeah, and then you're, when we get to it, you're going to say the line like you said that. So get your face in your hands. And let me hear the breath. Stand by. Action. I know. It's just that. I need to see your face. Oh, sorry. Yes. No, 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 don't apologize. Okay, good. We'll start again. Don't apologize and go into this good student mode because that was so beautiful. Just make sure that you, uh, you don't have to, uh, just need to see your face. You don't have to completely come up, but I need to see your face a little bit. Good. So start with your head in your hands. Stand by. Hear, let me hear the breath. Action. I know. It's just that you grew up all this time with all the people you love. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for being my demo, Christian. That's really nice work. So you can see how effective uh, physicality and breath are that as long as the other character believes that you might be crying, yeah, then you don't have to force tears. You don't have to leak in the spot where you say, uh, say leak. So it's information, but you don't have to. That. Okay, it's 4.03. Uh, yesterday, uh, Can, uh, Candy asked about uh, headshots, and I told her that I would find the link. Uh, so uh, Candy, here's the link to the YouTube uh, video from uh, the one that I did about uh, headshots and demo reels. You know, the like, I think the, my Wi-Fi was a little bit patchy that day, but there's some information for you. Um, unmute yourself, wave goodbye at the littles who have to take off. You know, and anybody who wants to stick around for questions, I will be here for in another ten minutes. You know, so bye, people who need to leave. Bye, bye, Chris. Thanks for being my demo today. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Thank no you. problem. Bye. <laughs> Bye, thank you. Bye. Bye, Bye Kaden. Bye. Come back you thank can be you frankled by the mummy. <laughs> uh, the all right. Uh, so, uh, questions, comments, concerns. You know, uh, what what would you like me to talk about? It doesn't have to be in any way related you know, to what I've just been covering. But if you have questions, you know, I'm here and available for you. I have a question. Please. Um, my question is. Are there um, roles available for Indian actors? Uh, the, in general, I would say that, that currently in Vancouver, especially with smaller or supporting parts, uh, they, that there are probably more roles available for actors who are not Caucasian. You know, now, I would also say that you know, in general, the film industry is still very, very stupid about uh, race you know, in general, you know, in that uh, the, uh, while there is certainly a really excellent case to be made that like you should hire an Indian actor to tell a story that is uh, like about, you know, people from, you know, uh, with an Indian descent or with that cultural background. In practice, casting is basically based on skin tone. You know, the, right, that if you look like you might be Indian, you know, then you can be cast as Indian. You know, and there are lots of people who have very justified big feelings about that, you know, but that still is the reality in, for casting, you know, in film and TV, you know, like is for somebody who actually has say a, you know, a background that's Indian, like you can probably tell when you're watching a movie, you're like, wait, that person's not even remotely Indian. Like you can tell, right? Yeah. Right. But the, uh, I would say that the, the entirety of history up to this in film and TV up to this point that has trained audiences that somebody with like brown skin you know can play an Indian person you know uh, means that audiences aren't used to recognizing the same details that you are yet and I really hope that that continues to shift um, but uh, like are there parts you know for you know uh, folks who are like specifically um, Indian definitely and I've seen them, them that say like you know, uh, must speak Hindi you know, the, but it'll be, 
especially if it's something with an accent, you know, or they where they want you to um, uh, uh, you know, uh, speak Hindi or you know, Punjabi. The I'm sorry about my own cultural idiocy. You know, the I uh, then typically those are like you know the parents or the grandparents of the lead, like somebody who's like, hey, like here's your lunch, you know, or come on in, you know, or like how was school today, you know, and then uh, more significant roles, you know. Uh, can can sometimes come in co-productions, you know, and there there are some really interesting co-productions that happen, you know, sort of between here and India, you know, where they need somebody uh, who is a, a native speaker, you know, who's also very comfortable with English, you know, I, and I don't know a lot about those roles because I don't get cast in them, <laughs> you know, and I don't you know uh, audition for those projects, you know, I, I dance, I love dancing, you know, but uh, but I'm afraid you know the I don't you know, speak any South Asian languages at all at all. Okay, thanks. Of course. I'm curious. <laughs> um, right, and, and it's a, a good question. I think that you know, the building on Carrie's advice you know, from uh, Friday, you know, that this idea of like you are enough exactly as you are, mm. you know, that uh, if you look at the leads you know, in TV shows, yeah, a lot of them you know, still uh, look uh, the like sort of wafy models. You know, uh, yeah. but, if you look, but if you look at the supporting characters, the supporting characters are getting progressively more diverse. Yeah, you know, and so, yes, you know, talent agents and producers and everybody, you know, they look at a character, they look at an actor and they look at their headshot at this size and they look at their picture on screen and they're like, do I see dollar signs? You know, but then after that, after that sort of like, cool, are you, you know, 22 and in the like most competitive, you know, most marketable, like we want to sell your face category. After that, it's like, are you a good actor? Yeah. Uh, and being a skilled actor is something that is uh, always a competitive advantage, you know, and they need that for auditions and they need that for their movies, you know, and that's something that is in our control. Yeah. You know, and so uh, if, and so uh, if you are a skilled actor, like I think that there are opportunities out there for you. Yeah, and that's something that you can start building, you know, at any point. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Christina, uh, thanks for waiting. I know you had a question. Thank you. Okay. So I know the last time you said like your acting should come from like how you feel, right? But what happens in reading? Cause today I did really well with the reading. So like, how would you like still do your character? Cause sometimes you're not focusing on like, you're just focusing on your lines there and then you get nervous and it overtakes you in the nervousness and then you get the words wrong and then you're like, like, oh, totally. You mean like, so the, the thing that you did today is called sight reading, you know, where you look at lines and just say them. Um, and, you know, is, is your question, how do you get better at sight reading? Mm. Yep. How, do you, how do you get better at soccer, right? Like, you practice, right? Yeah, exactly. That's, that's really it. Like, it's not rocket science. It's not something like essential about you as a person or as a reader. Like, it literally is just practice. So, it, like, you must practice your both like two, like there's different types of like, so it's like you must practice your reading like on screen and then like your um memorizing monologues and all that stuff right like they that both of those uh aren't are things that you could practice you know that would move you towards a professional level of skill right and uh, and i i think for the first God, three or four years I took film and TV acting class. They, the class was like half cold reading and half, uh, you know, us doing scenes. Yeah, so, uh, so initially like uh, cold reading and just like looking down, picking up the line, looking up and saying it, you know, was something that I, I spent hours practicing every week because I was taking a class that was focused on that. Um, and that was one of the things that opened it up for me. You know, after, after theater school, I went to a theater school that was so, where the work was so analytical uh, that I didn't feel anything. And I was like, well, I guess I can't act. Huh? Better find something else. And it wasn't until I started taking a class that was like, just trust that the lines will uh, do the work for you. You know, the, right, just bring it up off the page and connect with the other person and say them, you know, that I started to feel things. And I was like, oh, oh, wait, maybe there are other ways into this. You know, so um, if you've got young people in your life, uh, reading books to kids can be a great way to practice sight reading. That's a good idea. Because because uh, they like it most when you make eye contact with them. And in sight reading, what you want is to be able to drop your eyes to it, but then look up and say it. And if you, <laughs> if you can do that, then you can go in for three lines and they can be like, wow, Christina, you, uh, you did such a great job as like soccer girl number three, which is the one you prepared. 
Um, we'd like you to read for the best friend of the lead. Here's six pages of dialogue. Just take it outside, you know, and let us know when you're ready to come in. You know, and that, I don't know, maybe that won't happen as uh, in the same way, you know, once we're doing taped auditions, you know, then they'll be like, we'd like you to read for the best friend of the lead, but like, you'll have them for tomorrow. But the beautiful thing is that if you get good at that skill, then even if your life is crazy and you don't have time to memorize, potentially you can do a read of a scene. Oh, I've got a script here. So let me show you. Right, so this is uh, a scene that I'm working on for practice right now. I just happen to print it up you know, with paper. So the important thing with sight reading is if I'm reading with Christina, you know, the, uh, and I'll put it myself in, uh, spotlight myself, make sure, good. So uh, what's really important is that if I'm reading with Christina, that I keep the script exactly in line with where I'm looking at her. That it's not even slightly off to the side. Because if it's slightly off to the side, then I'm like, Christina, you know what I've got to tell you? Is that, and it's really clear that I'm looking at a script. But here, if it's exactly in line with Christina, then it looks like I'm just thinking about what to say. Because when I look at my script, it looks like I'm looking at Christina's body and I'm just like sort of dropping my eyes to her you know, shoes for a second while I think about what I want to say to her. Does that make sense? And so it's a weird, like very specific technical thing. But with sight reading, you want to make sure that you're holding the script exactly in line with where you want your eye line for the main person you're talking to to be. And then the goal is to basically practice recognizing the lines very quickly. You know, so you go over it you know, uh, by like, you look down, you look up and you say it. And the first time or initially, you might only get a few words. The first few, the second few, and the rest of the sentence. You know? And then after even just like a, a week or two of practice, you'll get to the point where you can pick up a sentence and you can pick up longer sentences just by glancing at them. You know, it's, it's not difficult, you know, to uh, get that skill in your body. It just takes practice. Like, also, like, let's say, like, we don't know a word. Like, this time, I need to worry about too nervous to, like, say it wrong. But if you don't know it, just say it. Just carry on, right? Don't stop. In, in that situation, yes. Right? Like, if you're the reader for somebody else's, you know, thing. And now, if uh, you're preparing your own script, right? Like, that's, so that's going to come up in a class like this. But that's not going to come up in a professional audition, typically. But if it does... If they're ever like, here, read this script. Yeah, just say it wrong. Nobody's even going to remember afterwards except you. You're going to be like, ah! And everybody else is going to be too focused on like, what's Christina like as a person? They're not going to be, they're not going to remember if you said Winona or Winona or like whatever the heck the name of that town is. Now, and if you're ever confused about how to pronounce a word, like um, let's say like a lot of students sometimes and their parents have really thick accents, right? This like your super adorable, like eight year old girl. And it's like, she didn't have really have much of an accent, but her parents both had like really thick Eastern European accents. Uh, and so preparing a script was tough because like when she would say, Hey, how do I pronounce this word? Her parents would be like, you'll say it like this. <laughs> you know? And then she would come in with like this sort of very odd pronunciation for like some of the confusing words because she'd asked her parents about them. You know, so if that's the, if you ever hit a word that you don't know how to pronounce, um, and I haven't I showed you this in class yet. You go to uh, da -da -um, translate.google.com. You know, and uh, you put in a word like sanguine, you know, which like, who knows how to pronounce this word? You know, uh, or the, what was the, the one that I showed you? Ex sanguinate. Very odd word, you know, but it was in the script that we looked at yesterday. Exsanguinate. And you hit this little listen down here. Exsanguinate. Yeah, and not only will it uh, give you like a phonetic version of it right here, but it'll say it for you as many times as you want, right? And that's true if you are doing a script that has words in German or words in, you know, uh, Hindi or, you know, words in Mandarin or that you don't know how to pronounce. So easy, go to Google Translate, takes you 30 seconds, and then you've got it. Right? So there's no, no excuse if you're doing a prepared audition you know, to go in and, uh, and not um, know how to pronounce one of those words because it's just so accessible. Well, I suppose the one legitimate excuse is I don't actually have internet where I am because I'm in the wilderness. Okay, great. That's like a totally legitimate excuse in my book. Thank you so much. I didn't know I had to like practice the reading, but now I know for future. Okay.
Um, okay, uh, well, I will see you uh, next uh, Monday. Uh, they're still confirming a uh, guest for this Friday, but my, my sincere hope is that we will get Tina Peme, you, uh, who said, yeah, I'm into it. And I just like, I haven't heard back you know, from uh, her to like double confirm. Um, so, uh, and she's a, a local producer who's been working on something just recently. So uh, that's my hope. Uh, so I hope to see some of you on Friday. Have a fabulous week, humans. Friday. Bye. 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 Bye.